Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alberto Ardip. The framework of my work is about developing a generalized forecasting model for volcano eruption using transfer machine learning. And today I'll be talking about the first stage in this project, which is about locating volcano eruption precursors in seismic data. I'm from the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. Seismic data has been extensively used in the past to monitor volcanoes, to detect unrest periods, and to identify eruption precursors in the signal that could help us to identify future events. So, the first step in our research was to filter the seismic data or the raw data in different, in different frequency bands, from where we generate four data streams. The first one that we call the standard RSEM, which is a filtered version of the raw data between 2 and 5 Hz. Then we calculate another one between 4.8 and 8 Hz that we call middle frequencies, and an extra one of 8 uh, between 8 and 16 Hz that we call the high frequencies. Also, we calculate an extra data stream called DSR, which is the radio between the middle frequencies and the high frequencies. And what I'm showing in the bottom is just an example for the for a seismometer in the Fakari in the Fakari volcano, where I'm showing the RSEM, the middle frequencies, and the high frequencies for a month of signal. The second step for us was to calculate time series features from the, from the four data streams. The features can be thought of as statistical parameters, and the time series quantify how they evolve in time. So the plots are showing examples of the features as the medium, the max, the number of peaks, the total energy, fuel coefficients, or the gradients that are calculated for a certain window of the data. So we calculate the features for sliding windows and then generate a time series of this particular feature. We are especially interested in anomalous values of these time series features that occur before eruptions. So for example, what we see in the bottom is the evolution of the feature DSR medium that corresponds to the medium of the DSR data stream one month before the eruption of Fakari volcano in New Zealand on, in, on 2019th. What you can see is that this feature evolved in a particular way before the eruptions, before the, this eruption occur. Okay, here is where things get interesting. So uh, as a first step uh, in this project, we intended to quantify similarities between different volcanoes to be used later when transfer learning from one volcano to another one. Currently, we are working uh, with a database of 18 eruptions from six different volcanoes. We are using a series of eruptions from the Fakari volcano in New Zealand, two eruptions from the Ruapehu volcano also in New Zealand, two another eruptions from the Tongariro in New Zealand, two ero three eruptions from the Pavlov volcano in Alaska, two eruptions from the Beniaminov volcano in Alaska, and also uh, three eruptions from the Besimiani volcano in the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. All of this data is freely available from the GeoNet and the, uh, uh, from the Alaska Volcano Observatory. So, for these 18 eruptions that I show you in the previous slide, we calculate time series feature for one month before each eruption. The time series are 700 for each data stream in each eruption. So yeah, there are a lot of time series. The plots that I'm showing uh, on the bottom show examples of two time series features for the A18th eruptions. In the left, you have the 75 minute high frequency harmonic and in the right, you have the DSR rate variance, which are just two different features calculated for the 18th eruptions that we are working with, one month before each eruption. We have around 700 of, of this figure, one for each feature. 
Okay, so this is the essential part. For each feature, we correlate one month pre-erupted time series of each eruption between them. So, for each feature, we calculate the time series on each eruption and then we calculate a correlation coefficient for each pair of eruptions. That's what is being shown in the matrix on the bottom, on the plot, where each cell shows a correlation coefficient between two eruptions. For example, we can see here that the pairs between Fakari eruptions are highly correlated between them. And also you can see that some other random correlations that the ones that we have here, for example, indicating that you have a high correlation between the Beniaminov 2013 eruption and the Fakari 2019th eruption. The next step for us was to systematically mine this uh, correlation matrix, the 700 correlation matrix, one for each feature, to locate pre-eruptive highly correlated features. From there, we locate several features that are highly, correlate, that are highly correlated before eruptions. A good example of that is the DSR medium that I showed you in a previous slide, where we found a consistent cycling occurring around one week before the eruptions. The plot on the middle enlightened the evolution of the DSR medium one week, one month before several eruptions where the similarities are evident. The plots show three examples from Fagari, one from Beniaminov and one from Ruapehu, where we can see this cycling happening just one week before the eruptions in all of them. And this is kind of the case for the rest of the eruptions too. An interesting aspect to notice is that the, that the behavior that is being enlightened by the feature are not easily appreci appreciable in the data. The data is shown in the background with the cyan color and that behavior of that cycle is not easily appreciated from, from there. So the features in this case are enhancing a behavior in the data that is not appreci appreciable from the naked eye or just in a, in a simple way. Another remarkable example that we found uh, exploring for highly correlated features between, between eruptions, we found it in the, in the feature Desart rate variance that peaks one week before several eruptions. Also, as in the previous case, the peaks are not easily appreciable from the data. The plot shows the plot the plot show examples for the six volcanoes that we are using in their stronger eruptions in our catalog. For example, both the two on the tops are the correspond to the pre-eruptive feature one month before the Fakari 2019th eruption and the 27 eruption in Ruapehu both in New Zealand. Okay, so this is really important too. So the next step for us was trying to, was, was to define what, what can be classified as a precursor from the behavior that, was, that we have been observing before eruptions and what's not. The definition that we came up was or the criteria that it need to uh, that a behavior need to need to have uh, to be considered a precursor is first that it need to be recurrent over the same system. That meaning, for example, in the DSR medium features that I show you, we saw that the the cycle, the DSR medium cycle observed for uh, Fakari 2019 was also observable in the other eruptions of Fakari. So that's a recurrent behavior in the same system. A desirable, a desirable property of a precursor is that it is transferable. Using the same example, the DSR medium cycle, we observe that cycle occurring one week before eruptions of other systems, as Ruapehu, Beniaminov, even Tongariro and the, and the other Alaskan ones. So, uh, 
that feature in particular also classify or that's a criteria that it met. But the most important ones is that it needs to be differentiable. So what I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say there is that if you observe that you observe a, a, a certain behavior or a different behavior occurring before the eruption, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is actually an eruption precursor. What you need to check is that the behavior that you are observing before the eruption doesn't happen in other resting periods of the volcano. So for that, we conduct a statistical significant analysis of the, of the behaviors that we were observing uh, before the eruptions and convoluted or correlated over the whole period of the signals trying to check is the observed behavior that we are of the of this characteristic behavior before eruption is only happening during the eruptions or before it. So what we did for example for the disor medium was to select as kind of an archetype the feature or the behavior of the of the of that feature that we observe before the 2019 eruption and convoluted over the whole Fakari record and the Tongariro record and the Ruapehu record and the and the Beniaminov record and for each and every day we calculate a correlation coefficient and from there we can generate kind of an histogram that is what I'm being showing here and then we can map the values of the correlation that we observe on the before the eruptions. What we obtain is that all of the values that we observe before the eruptions are exceptional or it, they, it's not the standard. So most of the values are just different for it. But this particular behavior is seen just before the eruption. We repeat the same analysis using a statistical significant analysis where we also calculate p-values uh, for the disarray rate variance and, and conclude that these two features or these two f the, the behavior that we observe for these features are actually precursors that meet the three criteria that we define to be recurrent, transferable, and differentiable. Finally, once identified what are actually proper precursors for the eruption, we use the precursors that we found to identify eruptive uh, eruption regimes before the eruptions. That allows, that allows to characterize different eruptive regimes, for example, for the Fakari 2019 eruptions, where we identify using these features and also the data from the, the seismic data and some other information from, from other sources available to identify five different eruptive regimes that, uh, uh, that suggest the, for the rapid formation of a seal before the eruption and that formation of the seal is what is causing the disar medium cycle that we are observing one week before the eruptions. The next step in our research will be using the precursors that we found to forecast eruption in the, for, in the short term. So we will be using the identified precursors to forecast by correlating using the archetypes that we found with new incoming data setting a, a threshold and that, that could raise some concerning levels. And we will be also be training a random forest using the precursors that we found for the uh, for from this analysis to identify to identify similarities with the incoming data and also setting a threshold for concerning levels. So the whole idea of the transfer learning in this case will be to apply what we have learned in some particular system to other system that will help us to identify precursory activity of eruptions. And to close, I want to thank to my team, David Dempsey from the University of Canterbury, Corentin Caudron from the Free University of Brussels, and Shane Cronin from the University of Auckland. Also to the GeoNet and the, and the Alaskan Volcano Observatory to make their monitoring system data 
freely available. And finally, thank you for all of your attention and uh, I hope you have enjoyed. Thanks.